what you're currently doing and uh, a little bit more about, you know, your own story. So are we in a lot, are we in a record mode right now? You're already, you've been recording for about 10 minutes. Oh, I have been. Yeah. Okay. All right, cool. Um, well, I don't know who the hell I am. <laughs> so that was a bad question for us to start out like that. <laughs> guy that facilitates change um, in any aspect of people's lives. Um, certainly it's uh, real estate, the real estate environment and then the entrepreneurial environment, you know, is really the vehicle um, because uh, whatever we do in our career isn't who we are. It's what we do to experience who we are. And, you know, the lines between personal and professional, they've become very, very blurry. I mean, for many, many years now, I think some people are maybe just discovering that. So that's really what I do. Um, my, my background was amazing. I was a bouncer in a teenage nightclub. I was the janitor when the club closed. And then I drove underneath the Space Needle in Seattle about uh, six blocks, I think it was, at, at the most. And the uh, orders came in at a seafood warehouse from the restaurants and bars and grocery stores from Bellevue to Seattle. And I would pack the literal five pound, three pound, eight pound orders of fish in boxes. I'd drive the route about a hundred hours a week plus doing both those jobs. And my mom said, uh, Hey, why don't you stop having guns pulled at you as a bouncer in the nightclub and working all those hours and sell real estate. So I, uh, started knocking on doors and cold calling expired about 31 years ago. Got it. Nice. Yeah. There's my massive background. <laughs> Here I am, man. There's, there's tons of people that I think that are, that do phenomenal door knocking and cold calling still. And Absolutely. I think the issue that a lot of them have, unfortunately, is they want to do something different. They want to, you know, that shiny penny comes in front of them and it's, oh, I can go do this. Or, hey, this person is telling I could do this on social media and now I should do that. And they abandon the the things that have worked for them and are continuing to work for them. What's a, a piece of advice that you would give to somebody that's, Hey, I'm, I, you're, you're crushing it. You're selling lots of houses. You're cold calling all day, you know, but you want to do this. Sure. Well, the first <laughs> thing I'd say is congratulations to them because they've confirmed that they are an entrepreneur because the definition of an entrepreneur for me is someone that gets something really working really, really well. And so they change it. So congratulations. I mean, everything has its duality, right? Yeah. Uh, what I would say is uh, actually look around to the people that you see that, that do have uh, a, a positive trajectory, um, a consistency in the production. And one of the things that you're going to find with them is they've found that one thing that they do really, really well and they do not abandon it. They only enhance it because the big mistake of human beings and especially entrepreneurs is they think that uh, multitasking is a positive thing to do. But what I would say to anyone watching and listening is um, uh, look up context switching and Google the image of context switching. And after you take a look at that, you'll stop bragging about your multitasking capabilities. So that's what I'd say in the simplest of terms, because the, the the most productive people are not the smartest, the most consistent, man. Definitely. Yeah. On the on the flip side, what about the people that they're just giving up too early because they're doing so many things? So they haven't found that one thing that they're really good at, and the reason that they haven't found it is because they tried it one time and it didn't work, so they went to the next, and then they went to the next, and then to the next, and then... They come to a conference or they listen to somebody and they're like, okay, now I got to go do that. And then now, and they just end up doing nothing their entire lives. Sure. You know, I, I define them. I, I think there's some parallels or, or maybe it's the exact same human being. You know, <laughs> you, you see other people running around. I'm an innovator. I'm an innovator. I go, really? You are? Well, let me um, ask you about your email open rates and what those look like. And let me ask you about your consistent video initiative. And let me ask you about the basics. You're not an innovator, you're an avoider. And, and so what I would say for people that are having that challenge, quite honestly, because I employ these same principles, go hire a coach to hold you accountable. I don't care who it is, but obviously you're not capable even at that low level to look at yourself and see that 
you're actually getting ready to get ready. You're, you're, you're really not stepping through a doorway of fear is what's happening. There's a massive avoidance thing. And we all have those levels. I mean, I don't care where someone is at in their business or in their life. Everyone has areas of, of, of fear. And, and go get the facilitation. Go get the support. No one's going to make you productive. But go find someone else to look at and observe and guide you on what to do. Because obviously, it's not working for you. <laughs> no, definitely. I... I I can uh, hear the the people that are watching this saying, that's me. <laughs> Maybe I should start a podcast now. That's yeah. what they'll say. Oh, no, sure. no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I think a lot of agents, unfortunately, when it comes to social media, they're doing great things or maybe they're just giving up too early. But when it comes to social media is nobody even knows what they're doing. Nobody even knows who they are. All they see is buy or sell a house, buy or sell a house, buy or sell a house. And the moment that that person doesn't buy or sell a house, then this person is like, oh yeah, screw that person. You know, uh, what should somebody be posting through their social channels? And what should that um, image and reflection that other people see, what, what should they be getting yeah, through really, those social channels? Really good question. It's one that I'm sure that, you know, you, you discuss a lot of people with people, whether it's here or, you know, as you, as you move along your day and teaching and coaching and training others, um, Here's what I would say is, is I would go back to, well, what guides that and what's going to be appealing to people? And just um, instead of being so academic and worried about, okay, I'm going to read this or learn this, and this is coming from a coach, speaker, trainer, this is coming from yourself, someone that guides people too, is, is maybe, you know, as we come back to this, stop, you know, trying to learn so much and start observing. So, so let's ask the, the audience this, I guess rhetorically, you know, what's the number <laughs> one themed television show the last 10 years? reality tv okay what's facebook want to be facebook wants to be the internet facebook pretty much is the internet facebook wants to be tv they, they want to be those things so so what is pulling the eyeballs in reality you know authenticity um so that's the first thing and, and i guess to confirm a little bit further too facebook's pretty smart and keeping those eyeballs you know connected is that uh what post does the algorithm reward at the highest level? Let's see, the post that's the most closest to reality TV, a Facebook Live. So, you know, pay attention is what I would say to what's getting a result. Because if you're, if you're doing this, you, you definitely want a result. I mean, that's the first part. So now look at it. Here's another principle to keep in mind. The person that clicks on or acts on anything that you put out there from a marketing perspective... Um, they're not the most important person. The most important person is it, the one that doesn't click, that doesn't act, but has an experience of what you've put out there that has consumed. Because anytime someone consumes something that you've put out there, they've actually made a micro commitment because they took some of their time, the, the most valuable thing we have to, to, to take in what you have there. And, and, and uh, the Nielsen Rating Company did some epic uh, research on video on Facebook, like the first three seconds of a video increases brand recall and, and brand awareness by 40% and likelihood to purchase through you by 40%, the first three seconds. So what, what I would look at is, is look at impact, know that principle. Now what impacts? Well, here's what impacts you know, the 95.5 marketing rule, only 5% of the audience that, you know, real estate agents are, you know, let's burn through our email list or let's burn through the world. Hey, I'm John. When do you want to buy or sell? And you keep doing that over and over again. Here's the problem. You're saying the right thing to the wrong people. And what I mean by that is the 95.5 marketing rule is only 5% of your audience is in the consideration phase, which means that a conversation about buying or selling is even relevant to them. Okay, so what you're doing, though, is is then the remaining 95 percent of the population, you're absolutely irrelevant. Well, what is relevant and where's the greatest opportunity for growth? The greatest opportunity for growth for any business is not in the 5 percent. That's the red ocean. That's where everyone's at fighting it out. And I'm going to do it just a little bit better. The greatest opportunity and specifically in the real estate industry and other industries, too, is is playing in that 95 percent of your audience. Well, what do I need to do then? Because I can't do conversion-based language to a, an audience that is indifferent because 5% of your audience is always going to be in the consideration phase. 95% is going to be in a different phase. Meet them where they're at, man. 
meet them where they're at, you know, community updates. Sure, maybe you do some some real estate market updates. Why would I do that and consider it somewhat content amplification versus conversion? Because I know that the news continues to, national news and local news is still publish what's going on in the real estate market. So that's informational, but you know, new businesses that open, you know, anything, if you really wanna widen your funnel and bring this back around, you know, to, to close the loop here, if you really wanna widen your funnel that we're taught, it isn't go buy another Zillow lead, it isn't go buy another realtor.com lead or pay their new referral fee as of this recording or that, you know, whatever, who knows how things are going to continue to evolve. That's not how you widen your funnel. You widen your funnel by connecting with human beings where that and where they're at is they're in their neighborhoods, they're in their lives daily. And so anything that connects. And they're also in their comments and messages and emails already that most people are not following up with. Most people are not even realizing that they had comments. Most people are not answering their phones because they have to generate more leads, but the people that are already calling them, they're not answering. Most people are worried about that next person as opposed to their current and past clients who are going to refer them more business. I like to talk about the law of the bullseye, which essentially states that if you were to throw a dart at a bullseye, um, that's the best prize. So I would give the dart to a realtor and I would say, hey, in the middle is a $10 million listing. You hit the bullseye, you get the $10 million listing. On the outside is $100,000 listings. Here's the dart, go. Well, everybody's gonna grab the dart and go for the bullseye. If I flip the question and said, the bullseye, you're gonna get the $10 million listing, but you're gonna get a divorce, you're gonna go into rehab, you're gonna have anxiety, <laughs> stress, it's gonna be the absolute worst thing for your life, you'll never get another client from this you'll hate that person and they'll hate you they'll leave you the one star review and the 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 hundred thousand dollar listings that would have been your best friend it would have been the person you connected with that you woke up so and good. said oh my gosh their their house their house is selling now let's do a barbecue with them and let's go to the football game and hey while we're at the football game they're also saying did you even know this person was an agent you guys need to come work with him as well you guys need to do that and that that repeatable referral business is what starts generating because you're working with people that are like-minded and, and, and whatever that might be, that bullseye person, maybe they were great for somebody else, but you have to be willing to say no to business and opportunities that are just gonna take you down the path that you're not currently supposed to be on. What's a good piece of advice for somebody that just keeps saying yes to everything? Well. It's uh, the simple one is get, get clear on, on what you want. The second one is to listen to what you just said. <laughs> I mean, you articulate so clear. I mean, I think what we both just shared here, you, you know, is you, you look at, you know, you know, if you want to be all things to all people, you bring nothing to no one. And, and it's cliche. Can you say that again? If you want to be all things to all people, you'll be nothing to no one. I it's, like that. It, I use the, if you're for everyone, you're for no one. Yeah. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. Yeah. And so... And, and, and one thing I'll share with you too, and, and a lot of that's, you know, that's a scarcity. Actually, people think it's abundant, you know, it's more, it's less. Because what's proven is when you make a stand and you're consistent and you take the risk for a cause and a belief, and I mean, when I say a, a risk for a cause or a belief, I'm not saying controversial, but you find your voice and you find your positioning, you know, as I look at, I know what my voice and my positioning is 100% in my business, and it's not even real estate related. I mean, mine, it's consistency and commitment. That's it. Laser focus. Does that have to do with real estate? Yes, but I demonstrate it in all the other areas. I strive for it. I'm conscious of it in all the other areas of my life. I think there's hopefully most of the, the top agents listening to this, they would say, yeah, I have a business plan. I know what my goals are and whatnot. And on the business aspect of things, sure, they may have a plan or whatnot. But what, what you said is, hey, when it comes to my commitment, when it comes to my focus and everything, it's not just for business. This is me. This is my voice. This is my story. What, what does somebody need to do uh, for personal growth uh, to say, hey, I, I have a business and life that I love, as opposed to, yeah, you can sell 75 houses and make millions and billions of dollars every year. But if you go back home at night and you dread sleeping next to your significant other and you hate 
your kids and you're putting things off, you have a terrible life in my eyes, at least. And in order to create a business and life that you love, what's something that you need to do? Well, I think the simplest form is get honest with yourself. Here, here's what I do know, because I've been real open about my journey. I got uh, clean, sober, it'll be 11 years in July. And I've been in the real estate business for 31 years. And what I know in walking that path, I always knew I wasn't, there was something missing. I always knew there was that emptiness. People think that people don't know if they're living in a way that's, I mean, I just choose to, and many can disagree. I think we're all good. I think we're all really, really good. I think we all know when we're not doing good. I think, you know, when you, you see someone that may seem delusional, I think people are just in avoidance when you look at that. But um, what I would do is, first thing I'd say to, to anyone is, first, you got to accept it um, because there's so much avoidance. How do you accept it? It's okay to not be okay. The second thing that I know, and hopefully I can I can pass this on to other people, and hopefully just in my my transparency, you know, you, you may hear hear what I walk through in, in, in alcoholism and getting sober, and now I get to, to, to help other people out. Hopefully that gives someone a borrowed belief out there to say, oh, you know, my issues are really, really small, but I do have some to walk through. Um, I, I'd share this from working with uh, very productive human beings in all industries. So we've all got our stuff, man. And if you're, no matter where you're at right now, please keep learning Please keep going out and, and seeking the knowledge that's specific for your industry or your business. But I'm going to tell you the one thing the, that will move the needle, and just so you're aware, that will massively move the needle. It's always something personal that creates the quantum leap long before some new ninja tactic, uh, some new magic software because that thing is holding you back. So that's the first thing that hopefully I can pass along to you. A, from walking that journey myself, certainly being able to, to, to get great results when I was in that phase, but knowing that it was not even as good as I could do, and it wasn't as good as I could actually feel in life. So know that everyone has their stuff. Know that your actual next growth in your business is probably 99% of the time based in your person before it is your business. Is there something that you're doing on a, on a daily, weekly, monthly type schedule that has impacted your life? Yeah, I um, have massive boundaries about around how many people I interact with outside of my work. Uh, because, you know, everyone were, you know, we hear of the, uh, the five people that you're around the most, you know, those quotes, yeah. well, there's something physiological that's true underneath it, our mirror neurons. I mean, it's true unconsciously, you know, the neurons within our body will mirror who we're around the most. So the first thing that I just, just as a general is, um, a, I'm very selective, and it's not a better than. I have people approach me because of, of my story personally, um, and then you know, seeing that, that, that life's pretty good. I mean, I'm not saying it's the greatest. No one's perfect. Um, and, and I'm open to people that are committed to change. I don't care where you're at. I don't care where you're at. It doesn't matter to me, but I care what you want to do in your life. So I'm... Um, Number one, what I do, and number two, what I'd suggest is your boundaries. And, and here's the one way I do boundaries. Is it someone that can enhance my life and make it better? Or is it someone I can facilitate change with support, okay, that is committed to it? Now, are we in the predicting game? No, you've got to use your own, own best discernment. But um, that's what I'd say is... is um, uh, you know, look at it from uh, a boundary standpoint. Um, I'm interestingly enough, and you know, in coaching people, some you know, I, I think maybe people respect it as I'm not the black and white. I'm not a morning schedule guy. I'm not a. Uh, I am a 24 hour person. And so, a if whether it's a perfect morning, perfect schedule, we see many great things out there. You know, I'm not here to say what's right or what's wrong. What well, I am, find what works for you. But here's mine. I look at, um, I don't look at routine, I look at ritual, which I guess becomes a routine. I look at rituals within a 24 hour period. Like some people need to go to the gym at a certain time frame. 
So A, it's um, I do something physically active that challenges me every 24 hours. You know, if I'm not in a place in the gym, it's it's that. Uh, I read or listen to something that is not, when I say the personal development stands, standpoint, it's not rah-rah motivational. It's really, really deep stuff. And, and I'm not saying that people don't listen to deep stuff, but I mean stuff that has to do with, you know, for men looking at your feminine energy, which uh, um, we all have, masculine and feminine energy. I mean, uh, studying the sages of, of human behavior because we're all in the human experience business. So, you know, at a minimum, it's, it's consuming some tor- sort of content there. Uh, it's checking in with one person a day. I personally right now have seven coaches uh, for me personally and in my business. Checking in with at least one person a day, except for when I'm in a, in a white space and, and solitude that's really important to me uh, and, and being open to feedback. Uh, but, but it's the simple stuff. Uh, and, I, I, the simple stuff. I, would, I love it, <laughs> the simple stuff. Because the thing that has made my real estate business great was the simple stuff. It's the, the, the experience. It's that concierge level that they get when working with me where every single person would say, I thought I was the only client because he just did so much. I don't even know how he did that. And it's because it was the simple stuff. It was hey, they asked for something, you said you were going to do it, do it. You, you know, you you promised to deliver on this. Hey, it, you promised to go on vacation with your family during this week. It, it's probably inconvenient now, but you made them a promise, go do it. It's going to make you feel better. It's going to make your family feel better. And, and that's going to come through your social media channels and that's going to resonate. And the moment that you, you know, stop, the moment that you just stop doing everything that you think is simple is usually the moment you just don't do anything. And, and, and it really is the simple stuff coming into a brokerage where I was the youngest person. And then three weeks later had a million dollar deal in escrow. They're like, how'd you do it? It's like the simple Simple stuff, stuff. (laughs) everything that sounds cliche, do that. And then, but, but you know, this and that. And they said, I had to sign up for this program who was going to give me this. And then I get a thousand leads over here and I do this. And I go, I had seven people walk into an open house. I greeted them. I asked them about their family. I talked about their goals. We didn't, you know, instantly say, did you see the bathroom? Like you, you can definitely, you want to be in that bathroom. It was about them. And I had two of those people buy a house the next month. It's the simple stuff. I cared enough about them that they say, hey, I, I think at least at some sort of level, there was trust that was instantly built because it was different. And I like to do things differently. When I uh, had open houses, what I would do is I would take the business cards and I'd throw them on the floor. I would take business cards and I would count out 10 and I would put them on a toilet seat cover. And agents would say, why are you doing that? And I said, that's why I'm exactly. doing it. Exactly. <laughs> It's like people that make comments about certain posts. Why did you, you know, why did you post that? Exactly. Thanks, yeah, that's, thanks for asking. Yep. <laughs> and, and, and client or people coming through the open house, they would pick up the card and uh, they would say, oh, I think somebody, you know, dropped this on the stairs. No worries. You can keep it. Uh, you know, you don't have to pay for it. It's fine. Good for you. And, and even if they were like, no, we really don't want to keep it or whatever it may be. What I tried to tell agents is, look. The majority of people coming into an open house, they're going to see an agent standing at one table, usually texting on their phone with a couple of cards and whatnot. That person is going to instantly avoid you. And if not, they just probably filled in fake information and they're, they're on their way. They come into my open house. They're greeted with food. They're greeted with a smile, a handshake and go told, do your thing. But guess what? They see me on the toilet and on the stairs and this, and they don't even realize it. But in their subconscious, they see Jonathan Hawkins and my picture and my branding. The moment that they leave the house, they go to the next house. They walk into the bathroom. They're going to even think about me in that bathroom because, oh, oh, that was Jonathan who left the cards in the toilet. And I think it's just doing things differently. And, And go ahead. Well, I want people to really, I just want to lose this thought. I want people to really capture what you just shared, though, because there's a theme here, and, and I hope you hear it here, and I hope you hear it everywhere, and, and, and any resource that you reach out to, but what 
Jonathan's talking about is a big deal. You know, some of you probably have some people in your marketplace that have billboards everywhere. Well, how come? Well, it's branding, it's familiarity. Well, guess what? How many times someone sees your face as they walk through the house? There's the business. I mean, every little bit stacks up. And here, here's what I'd say to you. It comes back to the other point that you made. You know, walk around and tell yourself, today I'm going to look for every place I can find a Nike swoosh. You'll be blown away. You'll be blown away. And then I'd ask you this too. How many times is there a call to action every time you see a Nike swoosh? No, Nike's not the douchebag real estate agent that walks in the cocktail party knowing no one. Because here's kind of what agents are doing in their marketing. This has been our marketing training for years. And, and you alluded to this. Is, 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 <laughs> right? <laughs> this is going to be. <laughs> yeah, is, is walk into the real estate party, you know, walk into the cocktail party. Hi, I'm John. What's your name? Oh, my name's Sally. Hi, Sally. I sell real estate. And I'm the expert agent that does this and this. Do you know anyone thinking of buying or selling? And people are being advised to say that over and over again. And it's like, really, you know, just paint. Actually, pull out the Sharpie and put the L on your forehead. Because if you look at the polls, that's part of what the consumer's saying about us. It's just simple behavior like that. We're in their face. Now, you de do you need to ask? Yeah, but I, I'll say this with the marketers that I've been around and then watching with marketing and what gets results and what doesn't. It used to be it doesn't hurt to ask. Well, I got news for you, everyone. Uh, today, sometimes it does hurt to ask. So look at, you know, am I making, and, and, and here's really where I define it is you're going to most of the marketing in, in any industry really, but I'd say mostly in real estate because you look at our ranking in the Harris polls next to attorneys and next to used car salesmen. We're right up there. Congratulations. Is think of it this way is we're going to a bank account we've put no money in with an ATM card and we're trying to make a withdrawal. So um, why don't you make deposits in the business relationship equity account? And interestingly enough, you won't even have to put your ATM card in because people, they know what you do. Stop, you know, acting like they're a dummy. They know what you do. Make deposits in the business relationship equity account. The only reason people say no to you or don't, trust you is because you haven't put enough money in the bank account because you're asking with the withdrawal for their time and then their trust well you've got to put something in to get time and trust back and and uh that just really comes back to just providing value to people and you know i have people reach out to me and go you know you talk about providing value and blah 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 and you only got a hundred likes on that photo and who cares? We're not in this business to get more likes and to get more follows on social media. If I'm providing value, which you pointed out, so it's obviously must be a, a you know something. Well, that's that's what I want because you know. Oh well, how many leads did you generate last month through social media? It's like, hey, if I go to a listing presentation and we start talking, and they're like, Jonathan, we know all about you. We know about your family. We know what you do. We know what you. That came through social media. I didn't need them to send me a message and said, hey, I'm ready to sell my house. I'm a lead. This is coming from social media. No, because since I'm tracking and measuring where things come from, what my conversion rates are, how many people I need to talk with, uh, I know that, hey, I can track this back there because without it, they wouldn't have, have seen these things. And, you know, I think that too many people are just caught up for whatever reason, and just leads, 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 leads. And we keep emphasizing, and I keep telling people, it's not about the leads. It's about the relationships. It's about the people that you are connected with. And anybody else who hates you, let them hate. If you don't have haters, you're probably doing something wrong. So don't worry about them. And, you know, wrapping this up, uh, and, and, and just, you know, kind of finishing it off with the relationship aspect, there, there's something missing in my eyes between the agent and uh, the consumer. And for me, that missing link is because the agent hasn't told what I would consider a story. They've given them the ending, which is call to action, call to action, call to action. They didn't give them the beginning and the middle. And, you know, and it goes back to not only them, themselves, it goes back into their listing descriptions, three bedroom, two bath, 1,500 square feet, buy now. Not, 
hey, we're selling this house. They're moving off. Their son just, you know, got a baseball scholarship and they're doing this. This is a phenomenal house. Imagine yourself here. Look at the pool. The last people, you know, they actually built this in and they did this and then they would come in and they would dry off. They'd watch a movie and they do all these. Could you imagine yourself living there? And now you've actually created a story where the, the call to action was, can you imagine yourself living there? The, the human brain actually uses five parts of it. And I know this from intelligence training. It, no, it, it uses five parts when you tell a story. So when somebody tells you a fact, a fact is the house is for sale, you should buy it. The human brain actually only uses two parts. Mm -hmm. But when you tell a story, the human brain activates five different parts. Why? Because that person is now envisioning themselves there. They're envisioning what it would be like. Oh, Imagine if we had a kid there too, and then they went off to baseball camp. So, oh, that would be phenomenal. We need to go check this house out. Then they go check the house out and they meet somebody that is continuing to provide value. Hey, here's a list of all of the open houses in the area. I want you to go to check them out. I know you were going to go check on your phone anyways. Here, here it is. And, and they would like, they step back like, oh, you're just going to send me to somebody else's open house. You do all of those different things. When that person is ready to do something and you've been following, you know, your follow-up strategies and whatnot, they're not going to be able to tell you no because they've seen you so much and they are they literally feel connected with you. What's one piece of advice that uh, agents can do to have a tighter relationship with the current people and, and stop worrying about leads, leads, leads? Well, it's been, here's what I would say, and uh, we just, uh, we exchanged a message on social media, and uh, thank you for inviting me, so we didn't even really build up except for, hey, John, you know, <laughs> walking here to, yeah. to do this, of here's kind of how it rolls. Um, what I want to do is, is I want to uh, um, say to listen real closely to, to what you've shared. Um, I, I want to encourage people to it, because it, it can seem simple, and it is. Uh, I know that, that you um, uh, are surrounded by, work with, and support, you know, very productive people. Um, I get the privilege of two. And we keep trying to connect through the front of the brain. And, and it's so neat is, you know, because I just found about, about your intelligence background on the way here. And then as it weaves in... Um, and, and how it's just so key. You're not in the real estate business. This is the one thing I'm going to tell you, ladies and gentlemen. You're not in the real estate business. You're in the human behavior business. Get neurotic about human behavior and marketing second. Because if you're neurotic about human behavior, just as he was starting to go into that on story, which is probably one of the most powerful things in my observation of our conversation here, what... Jonathan's encouraging you to do is enter the back of the brain or the back of the head to the unconscious, making psychological and emotional bonds because the unconscious brain chooses. Everyone's trying to come through the conscious brain through logic. Logic doesn't choose. It justifies what the heart shows and that's through those emotional connections and what story does so um, wrapping that up it's uh, be neurotic about human behavior not sales love and, it and then back your way into the sales i love it for people that are listening where can they find you if they want to connect with you send you a message sure yeah across any of the platforms just check black live you know, my facebook or my instagram uh my actually my facebook is uh, john cheplax come to my personal one i like hanging out there um, love interacting with people. So John Cheplak on my personal Facebook page, um, my Instagram, Cheplak Live, and then my website, Cheplak Live. Perfect. Is there any, anything else that you uh, have itching at you that you would love to tell somebody that, that, that might be listening? Well, I think that, uh, you know, listen to what you keep hearing over and over again, um, and, and that is the factor of video and, and, and the massive impact that it can have. Uh, and the first thing you're going to go to is, oh, it scares me. And, and, and here's all I know is that information isn't going to bridge the gap from a thought to an action. And we all have this thought, maybe I think hopefully by now, if not, you're living under a rock that you should be using video. Well, more information isn't going to get you to act. Uh, emotion and inspiration is, and, and I want to encourage you to do this. Don't go out and do a big why. 
I think, you know, Simon Simonick sold more books than me and probably makes a lot more money than me. But if you really look at it and break it down real closely, it actually plays against human behavior. Because the number one reason we don't take action is overwhelm. And that's why many people are distracted. So what I'd, what I'd say to you is find one thing that hasn't happened that a little bit of consistency can deliver that result really quickly in your personal life to tap in your emotions, tap in inspiration, because here's what it's going to do. It's going to give you a victory. A victory gives you confidence. Confidence gives you momentum and momentum's unstoppable. I think that was great. And uh, with that, we are going to wrap things up again. You can follow uh, John at Cheplik live or also on his Facebook personal page yeah. at John Cheplak. Again, thank you so much for, you know, I'm sure your time is more valuable than mine and I'm <laughs> definitely uh, appreciative of you, uh, you know, coming up here and whatnot. And, and, and again, the power of social media is huge. That's me reaching out to you and say, Hey, this is what we want to do. And if you would have said no, that's fine. But look what happened sure. with, by just taking a chance. And, and I think some people just need to listen to this and whether they listen to the whole thing or this, this last second, you know, piece, it's just, just do what you said you were going to do. That's it. And, and things will happen for you. Yeah. That's yeah. it. Hey everybody, this is Jonathan Hawkins. Thank you so much for staying until the very end of this podcast. I definitely appreciate it. As always, make sure to reach out to me via social media at Jonathan Hawkins Official. Send me a comment, shoot me a DM. If you have any questions, you can also comment below. Thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe below. And remember, who you hire truly matters.